Clear the route, folks. Right wheel.
Good morning, everyone. And welcome to this, our annual Remembrance Day Parade. It's, isn't it wonderful to see all the troops on parade and to gather after three years absence? And uh, we even have a beautiful day. On behalf of the commanding officers of 32 Combat Engineer Regiment, 32 Signals, and the affiliated cadet corps on parade today, and the staff and management of York Cemetery, we welcome you to this, today's Remembrance Day service and parade. Bandmaster, the National Anthem. Pray! To the front! Salute! Let us pray. Almighty God, as we come to you this day, our minds are filled with the mixed emotions of grief for those who've been lost and thanksgiving for the country that we live in and the freedoms that we cherish. We pray that as we remember that you would safeguard all members of the Canadian Forces, our veterans and their families. May we ever honour the fallen and help the living. Amen. The Engineer Prayer. Engineer Prayer. Almighty God, we pray thee to bless the Canadian military engineers. May our bridges always stand and our charges never fail. Our members be ever loyal and our officers worthy of their loyalty. May we work diligently in all our purposes and be skilled in all of our trades. Steadfast for king and country everywhere. Amen. in Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field.
Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. This Remembrance Day, those of you in the seated area, you may be seated. <clears throat> this Remembrance Day today, like all Remembrance Days before, we stand in the shadow of this cenotaph. This cenotaph, which is styled after the cross of sacrifice that we see in so many European and Far Eastern battlefields that mark the place of the fallen. We remember the 111,500 stones that mark the place of fallen Canadians in two world wars. The majority of those stones throughout Western Europe and the, some in the Far East and another 516 in Korea. Further, we reflect on the hundreds throughout the world who have served and given their lives in peacekeeping, NATO and related operations, whose resting places are scattered throughout our land, including 158 that fell in Afghanistan. And we come this day to do what we always do, to remember, to reflect, and to honor their sacrifice. And often on these days we ask why, what does it all mean, and what is our purpose in remembering. Many years ago when I first joined what was then Two Field Engineer Regiment, I remember very clearly my first officer's mess dinner. I sat at the head end of the head table and I was introduced to a gentleman who sat beside me. He was introduced simply as Major Burton. And I looked and being rather new to the military, I looked at the miniatures on his chest and I recognized some of them. I recognized his campaign stars from the Second World War, his volunteer medal, the victory medal, and then I noticed there were medals closer in towards the center. And as we had this conversation with this gentleman well into his 90s at that time, I came to realize the man I was sitting beside really personified the history of our Corps. Those medals that were closer in were World War I medals. He had served as a lieutenant in the Royal Canadian Engineers in World War I and was a major in the Second World War. Such encounters are no longer possible because there are no veterans from the First World War that are left alive today and there are fewer and fewer of the great heroes of that great conflict that we call World War II. And yet, everyone here who wears a uniform and every veteran who has worn a uniform knows that we stand on the backs of greatness. Our world today faces many challenges. Conflict is ever the history of humankind. Our minds are not far, far today from the conflicts in places, especially the Ukraine. And we wonder what the implications for our modern world are. The Canadian Forces is struggling with retention and equipment and purpose. 
I would say to those on parade that our purpose is found in looking back and then walking forward. The Canadian Corps, as it was called in World War I, faced similar challenges at the outset of the First World War. There were very few in uniform. And yet through the First and Second World War, one in every 10 Canadians answered the call. In the dark days of the Great War, when the German army had created its and advanced on its great spring offensive of 1918, it looked like all was lost for the Allies. And there were two colonial countries, two new countries, that the battered armies of Britain and France turned to. They said, they're at the gates of Amiens. They're about to cut off the supply to Paris. And the Americans have not yet arrived in strength. We are afraid we might lose. And it was the greatest of all Canadian generals, Sir Arthur Currie, together with Sir John Monitz, the commander of the Australian Army, who stepped into that place and was surprised. The four divisions of the Canadian Corps over the next hundred days would push back 26 divisions of the German Army all the way back to Mons, Belgium. And the armistice would be called as the Canadians arrived at the place where the German army first attacked the British army in 1914. It was the Canadians and their innovation and their willingness to do what no one else would do that won the victory. Curry and Monas transformed modern warfare. Those hundred days was really the invention of all arms warfare and coordinated combined arms warfare. And it was the Canadians that led the way. He reconstructed his brigades and his divisions in a unique way that, that made for success and to the sappers on parade it was arthur curry our greatest general who said i would rather go into battle without the infantry than without the engineers he knew the value of your service and what you do and it carries on to this day canada needs more Canada. We need to remember who we are, what we have done, and the backs of giants on whom every one of us who's worn a uniform stands. Our nation continues to have families that will be forever changed by the service of those who went before and those who continue to serve. Some have had their loved ones broken upon return, some physically, and many psychologically and emotionally scarred. Surely they remind us of the debt that we owe. The one thing I am sure of is that no matter where Canadians have fought and the Canadians who bear the scars of service, the Canadians who've shed their blood and who've made the ultimate sacrifice, fought and will continue to fight in that great tradition that has always been the hallmark of Canadian service members. We confront tyranny. We're on the vanguard of freedom. And we come to the aid of others. We respond to the needs and the call of our world with duty, with honor, and with courage. 
Unlike many nations of the world, Canada's military history is not one of expansionism or land grabbing or power grabbing. We come to the aid of others who need our help. And so we pick up those time honored words that Captain Henty read just a few moments ago. Those words first penned in the battlefield just outside of Ypres. Take up the quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we will not sleep, though poppies blow in Flanders fields. Their legacy, and the legacy of all who went before, the great Canadian Corps of World War I, those that fought in the fields of the Second World War, in Korea, in peacekeeping duties, and those who fell in Afghanistan, they pass their legacy to you. Those of you in uniform, as a nation, a grateful nation, pauses to remember. As proud Canadians, we cherish and hold the memory of their sacrifice in a place of honor. In hope, we lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world. As we honor the past, we look with faith to the future, faith that is exhibited in those wearing uniform on parade this day. And we pledge ever to honor the fallen and to help the living. The role of honor. Role of Honor. Lance Corporal Donnell John Irving, 2nd Field Company. Sapper White Albert Edward, 2nd Field Company. Corporal Caldell Arnold, 2nd Field Company. Sapper Barnes Arnold Edward, 2nd Company. Sapper Berge Oliver Lorraine, 2nd Field Company. Sapper Bissett William Nicole, Second Field Company. Sapper Buckus Leslie Ernest, Second Field Company. Sapper Brew Raymond Ammon, Second Field Company. Sapper Brown William Albert, Second Field Company. Sapper Sharbat Peters, Second Field Company. Sapper Coslo Frank, Second Field Company. Sapper Elliot Delbert Alvin. Second Field Company. Lance Corporal Gage Thomas R. Second Field Company. Sapper Marville Joseph John. Second Field Company. Sapper McGee Chester. Second Field Company. Corporal Russell Thomas Daniel. Second Field Company. respect of beliefs and individual conscience, I invite you to take a moment for personal reflection as I pray the signaler's prayer. Almighty God, whose messengers go forth in every age, giving light and understanding, grant that we of the Royal Canadian Corps of Signals, who spread the word of person to person, may be swift and sure in sending your message of truth into all the world. May we serve you faithfully, and with your help make success of our soldierly duties on this earth, that we may be found worthy to receive the crown of life hereafter. Amen. We gather this morning with gratitude and thanksgiving in our hearts, as well as sorrow and concern. With gratitude, on this day we call to mind the soldiers, sailors, and air personnel who have paid the ultimate price 
that we might live in freedom. We remember those who have died in distant wars and who, those who have died more recently for Canada. May our act of remembrance this day honor those who have put themselves in harm's way for the safety of others. We remember families who grieve the loss of loved ones. We share concern for those whose trauma from armed conflict is more recent. We pray for our veterans, for the younger ones and the older ones. We pray for those who struggle with their mental health and for those who feel that darkness is their only companion. And we are grateful today for all who continue to serve in the Canadian Armed Forces. Those who prioritize a spirit of respect and seek to serve others before themselves. We're grateful for their example of loyalty, courage, inclusion, integrity, excellence, and accountability. Keep them safe in their tasks, preserve them from danger, and return them to those who love them. As we remember this morning, we pray for the leaders of the world and those leaders in our own country at every level. Particularly today, we pray for His Majesty the King, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and the Chief of the Defence Staff. We pray for all who seek justice and resist evil. We, we pray for peace. May this be so. May we work to make it so. Amen. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. The going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
At this time, we'd ask that those that are laying wreaths, please take your place behind your wreaths and be prepared to lay them. Memory and thanksgiving of all that they represent. Our first wreath is on behalf of the government of Canada, James Fang. on behalf of the City of Toronto. Thirty two Combat Engineer Regiment. Two signals regiment. Eighteen eighty eight Royal Canadian Army Cadet Corps. Toronto Signals Cadet Corps. Canadian Military Engineer Association and the Toronto Sapper Association. to Signal Regiment Family Council.
32 CDR Soldier, the late Corporal Jeffrey Goldsworth. Late Corporal Daniel Sickles. Late Master Corporal Adam Shepard. Late Sergeant John Wayne Fott, Prince of Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. on behalf of York Cemetery. Before we uh, have the Royal Anthem, on behalf of the commanding officers, the regiments on parade and the cadet corps, we'd like to thank everyone for coming out and for helping us remember them.
Christ! Salute! Royal Anthem.
Just carry on.
ball. Go on, Junior. Out, down. Go. Go on, Trent, Tess! Fess! 